Today on Detroit Muscle, we're going to be kicking the chicken as the guys get started on what's going to be one mean Pontiac. We'll pick it up and then strap it to the dyno and do a tune-up before we build it. All this for a Trans Am that we're going to be giving away to one of you guys. Plus, we talked to Burt Reynolds himself about what made these cars so iconic. Detroit Muscle starts right now. Glad to see you guys joining us. This is our new V8 powered high octane rear wheel drive how to show and we're calling it Detroit Muscle. Yeah, here's the deal. We're going to be revisiting and rebuilding some of your favorite American hot rods and muscle cars. Shoot anything that came out of Detroit back in the day that had some punch to it. And on top of that, we're going to be hitting on some of the rides that are part of the new muscle car era. Big power is back. We're going to take some of these awesome rides and make them even meaner. Yeah, Tom, but we got a problem. Except for a lot of tools, this shop is empty, so we got to get busy and get out and find our first project. So coming out of the gate, we wanted to put our back into it. We wanted to pick a car that was iconic, cool, and something you guys could relate to. I think you're going to like what we picked. We knew it had to be something significant. Why? Well, because this first project is going to be given away to one of you guys. I've owned this car since 1986. What, 27, 28 years? My husband actually bought this car for me for my 29th birthday. He loves me. <laughs> well, there's no mistaking one of these birds when you see them. Chicken on the hood, shaker to go with it, honeycomb grill and Pontiac emblems. You sure know a Trans Am when you see one. And it all started right here with the 60s phenomenon called Trans Am Racing. This was the American muscle answer to European circuits. And there's a 69 Trans Am right there. This style of racing was known to be dominated by the pony cars, Mustangs, Camaros, Cudas, and of course the Trans Ams. But then, in 1977, Burt Reynolds and Sally Field went on the run from Sheriff Buford T. Justice in Smokey and the Bandit. We do love Burt Reynolds, and we love the shows. And after I seen that black car, I wanted one, but I wanted red. That one movie created a phenomenon which still resonates to this day. It's hard not to look cool in this Pontiac pony car which lies on the borderline between gaudy and downright aggressive. This particular car has been garaged for a long time. The old Pontiac 400 has a few squeals in it, but after we get done with it, it'll be making a whole lot more noise than that. Now, a very common thing to do is to take a used car for a test drive. I sweet talk the owner out of the keys, so we're gonna carry this thing down the road. One of the great things about these cars is they were legitimate contenders when it came to handling. The Trans Am was a sport tuned upgrade over the Firebirds. Think of it like a Z28 to a Camaro. No doubt it's a fun car to drive. This particular car really feels like it's at home on the highway and it cruises as smooth as glass. Uh, once it's laid out. Hey, is that Jerry Reed? All in all, this is a quality car, which is gonna be a great foundation for us to build on. Really, I'm gonna miss it. I'm very sad to see this car go, but somebody needs to take it and keep it up because it's just been sitting in the garage and it's time to get it out on the road. It's very much like a member of the family. I'm letting go of it. We figured before we started twisting bolts off this old Pontiac and taking it apart, would poke it on the chassis dyno. As a matter of science, of course. Mike Galley from our sister show, Engine Power, is gonna lend us his time in his shop for a little bit. So we can see just how many horses are hiding inside that Trans Am. Well, all righty, we've got the Trans Am strapped on the dyno. We're gonna make us a pull, cause we kinda wanna figure out what our baseline is. Now the engine, drivetrain and all that, we're gonna upgrade it, but we're just kinda doing this for grins. 
because we want to see what kind of power this thing's really making and we may do a little tweaking on it just to see what we can get out of it. Don't break her. <laughs> I have to say, you just blew the soot out of it. Oh my gosh! So how much power did it make? Coming up, we'll see how the old Red Dragon did on the rollers, and then see what else we can squeeze out of it. Plus, we take a look at a sleek, modernized supercar version of these classic Pontiacs. Welcome back. In case you missed it, today we're doing our best bandit impersonation. Our newest project car is this bright red 78 Trans Am. We're gonna slap it on the dyno and see what kind of a baseline we can get out of that 400 inch Pontiac engine. Oh my gosh! And boy, was it a ground pounder. That's right, 110 horsepower. But it's not surprising. By this point in the late 70s, Congress had had enough of the smoggy, <laughs> smoky cars of the previous generation. And the muscle car era, well, it was dead and buried. Emissions restrictions had killed the asphalt melting big blocks of years prior, and even high performance cars like this TA were underpowered to say the least. Try 220 horsepower at 4,000 RPM at the flywheel. Factor in parasitic loss from the drivetrain and the additional 40,000 miles on this engine's rebuild, well, 110 ponies actually sounds about right. 122 that time. 122. Yeah. The lady who owned it, I don't believe she abused it any. So um, I know this thing could probably use a tune-up. Probably even taking the air filter off this thing. Do a big deal. How Wake old's the air filter? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Is that yeah. dyno fan on? Yeah, it's on. Oh, this is ain't nothing. I ain't kidding. It was a black cloud behind you earlier. Go ahead and pull another and let's see what it does. Still, we're gonna try to blow the cobwebs out and see if she'll wake up a little. At the very least, we're hoping to break up 130 for a nice solid baseline before we tinker with the engine. One thirty-six, two twenty-five. We broke. We it. broke our one thirty. Yeah, that's kind of not that impressive, is it? One way to look at it: lots of room for improvement. So we picked up some tune-up parts from Summit Racing in hopes of waking it up. We're going to start out with some E3 spark plugs with Diamond Fire technology, which should pick up on the power. And if we were going to keep driving this car, it would also help us out with lowering emissions and improving fuel mileage. While we're at it, we'll also pull off the fuel filter. You can see it had some blockage, so a new one is a low-cost investment that can go a long way. A good set of spark plug wires will help out too. The ones we pulled off this car were pretty ratty. And a couple were even taped up where the insulation had cracked off. With the new air filter in place, we can now see what she'll do. Thing is, this time it smoked so much, it might remind you of an old steam locomotive. Facial expressions is like, oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> oh my lordy. Well, I think the carburetor's running a little bit rich. <laughs> a vacuum gauge hooked up to the carb will tell you how to adjust your air fuel mixture screws. It's pretty simple. Just try to get the maximum amount of vacuum out of each side to get the optimal mixture. Yeah, you could say it was a little bit fat. I adjusted the front idle mixture screws. They were about four turns out too far. So we're gonna see what that does. Well, we 
made about right. 16 extra. That's not too bad considering this old thing could probably use that tune up anyhow. So I don't see as much black smoke back yes, there. Yes, not nearly as much, and you know that's gonna save us some money at the fill up, which this thing is probably gonna have a few of them though. That it will. I'm done. I'm gonna go wash my hands now. You know, cause... but I, I noticed something though, Gally. Y'all check this out. There's something about a camo hat and a red Trans Am. It just goes together. It's the beard. It is the beard. Come on, let's go. Stick around and see what the man himself has to say about these cars. It's beautiful. Hey, welcome back. You know, when Pontiac redesigned the Trans Am in 1977, the result was a state-of-the-art statement to the world. One that said, hey, look at me, let's go for a ride. Well, cars and taste have evolved quite a bit since then. Heck, it's been almost 40 years. So the question is, what happens when you take a classic icon and rethink it for the modern age? Detroit Muscle salutes the Bandit Trans Am. When a car becomes the centerpiece of a movie or TV show, it becomes a co-star. James Bond and the DB5, the Duke Boys and the General Lee, and Burt Reynolds and his Firebird Trans Am. It's the car that jump-started Pontiac in 1977. Sales increased by 20,000 units that year, and it had a lot to do with Smokey and the Bandit. I've always said it was sexy. Golly, that's a sexy car. It's so it's just got the right lines and it's Kevin cool. King should know. As president of year one, he's made a business out of resurrecting dreams by distributing and manufacturing hard to find classic parts and restoring iconic muscle. One of their latest creations, the Bandit Trans Am. All we wanted to do was try some modern makeup. You know, we'll flush them out the windows, we'll build bigger wheels and tires give the interior a little upgrade, put a new modern motor in it, better handling suspension, and turn an otherwise already gorgeous car into a supercar. And that's exactly what we did. A supercar for a superstar. When approached, the legendary Burt Reynolds himself signed on as a consultant. And at his ranch in Jupiter, Florida. Look at that, honey hush. Burt took delivery of the prototype he helped design. Wow. Well changes per your request. It's beautiful. I'm under arrest before I even start driving. I've had many people pull up beside me now and not such good shape, 70 something, just like the bandit car. And they go, it's your fault. I said, I'm sorry, partner, but I bet you had a good time. He said, no, nah, I did. All of them had a great time if they ever had this car. What's it mean to you? What's the? Well, I mean, it's just a flood of memories that come over me when I see this car. But when I saw the first one, it was, this was the first time Jerry Reed had seen it too, and uh, God love him. He said, honey, hush, it wasn't in the script. And then we both just were jumping all around it, you know, and then he got in it. And uh, it was a rush, you know, to, to drive that car. The original 77 Special Edition featured a 400 cubic inch, 6.6 .6 liter V8. 200 horsepower to the rear wheels would get you down the quarter mile in 16 seconds. An LS7 out of a Z06 Corvette powers this bird. Under the black skin, the Burt Reynolds Edition is upgraded in every way, with modified heads and an upgraded cam pushing 605 horsepower, full tubular subframe, coilovers in the front, adjustable rear forelink. Modernize this muscle in every way. But beyond the mechanics, gauges, seats, and of course the endorsement, this T-top trans was left alone. The smooth body lines remain, along with the honeycomb grille. The four square headlights are gone. In its place, modern sealed units with bright LEDs for taillight. No doubt one cool car with one of the coolest cats again behind the wheel, both from a 36-year-old movie that's still a hoot to watch. What makes audiences like that film, and the reason it's had such an afterlife, is that you're watching people have the time of their life and they're not faking it. That picture was, was never worked for me. I mean, it was just 
just fun. Well, you had your best pal in the movie. You got a great dog. Yeah. You got a great woman, and you got this car. Yeah, well, it don't get no better than that, does it? I mean. Uh -huh. Come on, Bert, why don't you do a burnout? Now, in case you're wondering, yes, you can order one of those cars from year one, or you can get the parts and mix and match them, build a bird just the way you like it. So what kind of upgrades are going on the giveaway TA? Let's go over it and see what she needs. Well, folks, we've got our big bad bird into our shop because time to start scheming about what kind of upgrades we're gonna throw at this car. We are gonna keep it all Pontiac though, so first order of business is talk to the best Pontiac power guys we know at Butler Performance down in Leoma, Tennessee. Now we're thinking with a stroker kit and borne out the cylinders, we can get this thing above the 460 inch range. When it's all said and done, we're gonna be in the neighborhood of 500 ponies. And we're gonna have to upgrade the rest of the car to make sure it can withstand that kind of power. That's gonna include the transmission, the drive shaft, and that little old 10 bolt. We wanna give the suspension some love too. Take these 30 plus year old components and upgrade it with the modern technology that's out there. Another thing we got in store for this car, of course, is paint. Now you may be wondering, are we gonna keep this Pontiac dressed in red? Well, the previous owner may have loved it, but as for us, we're sold on black and gold. This car has a paint code of 19 on it, the Starlight Black, but it's missing the code of Y82 or 84, giving it the gold accent stripes of the special edition cars. It also missing the T-tops, but when we're all said and done with this car, it's gonna have the look and feel of those special cars from back in the day, but with a whole lot more attitude. You may also be interested to know that there was a Y88 special edition for 1978 only. It was a reverse color scheme, gold with black accents. So we're done. The plan is to have this thing looking like something Burt Reynolds would drive, but uh, handling and going like something that Mario Andretti would drive. I think it's going to be nice. I bet you. Well, here's a cool way to dress up your old Ford small block with a nostalgic look. It's a set of cast aluminum fin valve covers from Cal Custom. They fit 289s, 302s, and even 351 Windsors. You can get them at standard height or extra tall to clear roller rockers. They're a perfect complement for Cal Custom's fin air cleaner, but they won't clean out your budget at only $145 a pair. Mopar Rally wheels were once the big ticket for Dodge and Plymouth muscle cars back in the day. They're back and better. Year one is reproducing these Mopar rallies in a 17 inch wheel for better looks and to fit those bigger rotors. They're a lightweight cast aluminum and that means that they won't rust like the original stamp wheel. And they're powder coated silver and run you about 220 bucks. Well, here's something for you modern Mopar guys. In fact, it's a way to make your 5.7 or 6.1 Hemi bulletproof. It's a billet timing set from Comp Cams with induction hardened gears. It features a nine keyway crank sprocket for eight degrees of advance or retard in two degree increments. And the double roller chains, a heavy duty large pin design that's pre-stretched and heat treated. It's all backed by a one year warranty and sells for about 240 bucks. Well, speaking of timing, our time is up. See you next week.